I should let Ruben stay here because he says it's much better than I can do. <laughs> um, thanks for that. It's great to be here. This being at TED, speaking at TED, has been on my bucket list. But it's not the last item, so I'm not going to drop that just yet. Anyway, so what I want to talk about is uh, how a doctor reasons, or actually how a doctor should reason when we see a patient. I have the feeling that most doctors, and practically all patients, expect us to know your problem when you go there. You present with something, you say, I have a fever or a bad stomach, stomach ache or whatever, and you just expect us to say, oh yeah, I know that. That's what it is, we'll fix this. And we sort of perpetuate that impression too, because uh, since we have that expectancy from the patients, we feel obliged to provide an answer, even if we have no idea what we're talking about. <coughs> also, even if we don't have an idea what we're talking about, we don't really have the tools to find out while you're sitting there. You could say you could use Google like everybody else, right? But if you see a patient looking up the patients on Google, you know, take fever, dizziness, and whatever, the only thing you find is a million ways to die by Google, right? <laughs> so that isn't the answer. If you go to the doctor, they usually say, no, 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 not that, not that, not that. But if you try a doctor with a few diagnoses you find on the net, like, try this, ask your doctor to explain why your headache isn't a brain tumor or end-stage syphilis, okay? or latent tuberculosis. And what you get back will not be a recent argument, it will be like, oh, you know, cut it out, right? This is ridiculous. That's because we don't have a good answer for that. For us, that's normally not a problem, because we wouldn't come up with the idea in the first place. We don't have to disprove it in a second. But the problem occurs when you come with the diagnosis from the internet, which is highly unlikely, but not impossible. So if we look at how you actually reason clinically when you have a patient with a certain symptoms, it's not the wild search on the internet that's going to solve it. The first stage in clinical reasoning is in fact to take the patient's symptoms and signs, that they, the complaints that they come with, and from that, gather as many possible explanations as you can come up with. That is what you can do with Google. That is what we do in our heads. From that collection of hypotheses, we then collect the symptoms and signs and exams and technical procedures we can do to eliminate most of those ideas. So if you want to know if you have uh, uh, latent syphilis, well, we do a test for that. And then we can see, it. no, it wasn't syphilis, whatever remains. When you go through this process, finally you end up with the last item standing being the right answer, or maybe more than one. It's not certain that you only have one disease. But what happens today is that since we as doctors don't remember all these diseases in the first place, so our list of hypotheses is much shorter than what you will get if you try Google. And we only get the hypothesis that we actually know. So it's easy for us to exclude the ones that are not relevant or not right. So that works. What doesn't work is when you come with a hypothesis from the internet, it's much too big list. We can't eliminate all those. It's crazy. We're just going mad, trying. Also, you have the tool, Google, to come up with the hypothesis. There is no corresponding tool to eliminate the unlikely hypothesis from that list. Um, so, what we actually need to work with today, what, the only tool we have to work with today is the medical record. Yeah? And you probably heard that these systems get bigger and bigger and get better and better. But if you look into these systems, what they actually do, the only thing they do is a recording of whatever happened to you before. It's a recording of the exams that have done, been done before, the medications you've had, the doctors you've seen, 
and the number of complaints. If you look at the utility this, this has when the patient presents with a new disease, it's practically zero. It's good if you come back every year to check your high blood pressure to see what it was last year, but it doesn't tell you anything when you're in, your, in the emergency room with an acute abdomen, acute stomach pain that you didn't have before. Nothing in the record will tell you what the solution to that is, because it's not there. If somebody comes into the emergency room with a gunshot wound in the chest, your first reaction is not to go and look in the record what happened last year with his high blood pressure. <laughs> it has no bearing at the problem at all. And interestingly, most important problems in medicine are like that. You don't find the solution in the history. You find the solution in the present. present. So what we would actually need to work right is a system that doesn't keep us busy with just recording what we did to the patient, because that has very little utility. What we need is a system that works a little bit like Google does for you. The patient history goes in there with everything they complain about, and up comes a list of hypotheses. Now, from this list, I want to immediately be able to see what are the most important and the simplest and cheapest tests I can do to exclude most of them in one go? What is the next, next uh, relevant test and so forth? I can't remember these. It's impossible. And even if I did remember what I learned 35 years ago, only half of it is relevant today. It's all changed. I don't know. That's what I want to get back. I want to reduce this list as quickly as possible. Interestingly, if this tool was in front of me and I could use it, my path through the tool, taking the patient's symptoms, taking the signs, finding the list of possible explanations, eliminating these explanations because the most likely, least likely, and so forth, this path through it is a much better documentation than what we have today, where we just sit and type down, where, you know, he had a stomach ache and I felt in the stomach and it was tender and maybe it's fat. This pathway shows how I reasoned, which sources I used, why I arrived at the conclusion, and why I did not arrive at another conclusion. What we often see in, see in records today is patient presented with this and that and that and that and so forth, and I ordered an X-ray of that. What you don't see is, why did you order this X-ray? Why didn't you do an ultrasound? We're left guessing if the previous doctor didn't know he should order an ultrasound or that he had already noticed something and thought out something that told him ultrasound won't make sense here. R radiology is more important. So when I get this result back, I don't know how he reasoned. So we're constantly into this thing where we try to reverse engineer how the previous doctor was thinking when they ordered these tests to see if we agree with this hypothetical thinking, which is not written down anywhere, and to see what we would have thought if we, were, if we were thinking like him, then do that or decide that that thinking wasn't any good, I'm thinking something else. So this is what goes on when you sit there with the doctor and he's just staring at the screen. I mean, it's like the deer in the headlights of an oncoming car. You don't know what you're doing, right? So what do we see? Sweden is very much up front today uh, in the increasing automation of healthcare. And the basic idea is since, document, since they can easily show that the lack of documentation over a patient can cause harm. Sometimes we do things that we shouldn't have done if we had known that the patient had this or that disease or this or that medication. They draw the conclusion that more documentation must mean less accidents. And they've extrapolated that into the absurd extreme of if we only have enough information over the patient, healthcare will be fine. So what happens today? The medical record systems get larger and larger, filled with more and more stupid information, more and more repeated information, if you take an average diabetes patient, you can usually find the diagnosis diabetes somewhere between 100 and 300 times in the record. 
it's probably enough with one. Eh? Um, and Sweden is so far ahead here that they unified the medical record systems over the primary care, over the hospitals, and now they want to unify it over the whole country. And there's even a very expensive project to unify it over the whole of Europe. Where we five or ten years ago had a medical record of a patient where you could actually read through it in five minutes or a couple of minutes, it's now been expanded. For the same kind of patient, it's been expanded to 10 or fi up to 50 times the size. And all this is, is one continuous piece of text running from beginning to end. No structure, nothing. You can find where, where and when things happened, but not what. So you had to read it all. Uh, worst of all is that since it's one long structured text, which you can't even search in, most of these systems haven't invented control F yet. And if you ask them why, they say, well, nobody asked for it. Hmm? And if you ask doctors, why didn't you ask for it? They say, how stupid can you be? So it's not there. There is nothing in most medical record systems that even gives me a list of the major diseases the patient has. If you want to find that out, read the text. It's all there including text, I mean, the whole records from specialized departments in the hospital, which means if a patient has been to surgery and been in intensive care, well, two days of intensive care can generate hundreds of these entries. And what they say is, well, now you have all the information of the patient down to the least detail, now you know everything, healthcare must be perfect, right? Well, it isn't, because the mass of information doesn't work. And what you see today, in reality, is that most doctors stop reading the medical record. Which has the interesting side effect that they actually listen to the patient. <laughs> <laughs> which means that your typical doctor in Sweden, at least, and this will be increasingly the case in other countries, is going to look at the record, roll his eyes, turn to the patient and says, Okay, tell me about your problems, right? And you'd better tell him, because there's no other way he's going to find out, right? Another way of looking at it is that most of these systems have two functions. One is the record, the note record I'm talking about, the verbal, the prose going on, which is, I think, for 95% worthless. And then you have the communication function. You can send out prescriptions, you can get referrals, you send out referrals, and so forth. It's a kind of sophisticated fax machine system. That's fine. It's, it's hard to screw up, otherwise they would have done that too. So you can send referrals to some place and you can get them back and you can find them. Except, they're all organized. Referrals here, prescriptions there, uh, lab results here. But there's no organization that says, this is for his diabetes, this is for the operation three years ago and so forth. You have to find out yourself. So. If you're looking up something that could be a complication of a three-year-old operation, you just read through the stacks. It's exactly as if you didn't have a computer. And when the patient sits in your office, in comes a secretary with a wheelbarrow full of paper, tips it all on your desk, and says, here it is. Right? You have all the information. And then you've got 20 minutes to see the patient, so in five minutes, you're going to wade through this thing, and then you're going to dump it back in the wheelbarrow and take it out. That's how it looks, and that's the organization. What we need, of course, is to have this arranged for the actual problem we see the patient. But that requires the system to know what the problem is. If you look in the systems we have, none of them have the concept of disease. It's not there. They have the concept of patient, doctor, date and time, lab results, notes. Nowhere is the concept of disease. It's not there. It's as if you had an accounting program that didn't have the concept money. But you have the concept, a stack of notes, a stack of lab results, a stack of this and a stack of that. Now, if we start from the beginning, we can actually get rid of this whole thing. If we start out with the concept of a disease, you come to the doctor with your symptoms, I do my search, I get 10 hypotheses, I eliminate those effectively, what I have left is one or two. 
in that description, I also have do this, do that, do that. If I have that, I can actually do these things and have them connected to this was the template, the description of the disease I'm working through. Which means that the next doctor sees what I'm reasoning after. You have something to go to another doctor and ask him, is this a good plan? You, have, you can do a reasonable second opinion with it. This will be the anchor that picks up also all these different things that are relevant to that problem. If we today in our system sit with a patient with diabetes and I say, I'm going to write him a prescription, the system says, oh, well, fine, a prescription, great. Uh, which one of these 5,000 products do you want to have? Eh? There's stuff against diabetes, stuff against uh, psychosis, uh, against uh, osteoporosis, whatever you want. You can prescribe anything you like. But I'm treating a diabetic patient. Don't show me all this junk, right? I want to write a referral. It says, right, write a referral. To whom? To a curator, to a psychologist? No, to a diabetologist. You have to find that out yourself. The system is all the time, it's like a total attention deficit disorder. It has no idea what I'm doing. And every time I go in and try to choose something, it presents me with all the choices that are available for all the diseases and all the problems in the universe of medicine. And then we are surprised when we send the referral to the wrong person. Because the system won't tell us which person does actually handle which kind of patient. We have to know that. And insult added to injury. Once the referral gets there and it's to the wrong place, it comes back. Do you think you can forward it to somebody? No, nope. they don't have that. You have to print it out, put it on the table, and write it all over again. Because the concept of message and response and of forwarding hasn't been invented in this world yet. So, what we need to do is rethink our systems, starting with how we actually think about the patient, so we can stop fighting these absurd systems and actually get some feedback from them that we can use. Thank you for having me.